Hey guys, it's Vintage Vinny, and I have a thrift store haul for you today. Got a great assortment of stuff as usual, and I'm looking forward to sharing it with you all. Stay tuned. <laughs> Okay, you guys, so in no particular order, let's go ahead and jump right in. So everything that I'm going to share with you all right now came from these stores where I paid by the piece. So, and then I have a bunch of stuff that I bought at the Goodwill outlet that I will share with you. So in no particular order, I thought this was really cool and I thought of Miss Stone Home immediately when I saw them. They're iron-on patches, I guess either for Halloween costumes or if denim needed to be repaired back in the day advertised in Life Magazine. It was 35 cents, new on the packaging, never been used. Art on it is fantastic, and I know Miss Stone Holm would love to display this either at Halloween or just if she has, I don't know, possibilities are endless with her. For 79 cents, I found this. Now, I don't know if this is handmade or if this was something you would buy at a craft store back in the day. I'm not exactly sure what it is. It's a wagon of some sort, or like a wheelbarrow, I know that, but its use? I'm not sure. Maybe for a plant, or maybe for like decoration in your kitchen? I just thought that was really kitschy, and while I'm not usually a fan of pink, and I know it's not coming up as dark on camera, but this is kind of like a lighter kind of pink. But something about it was really interesting. I guess it could be fun for Easter. That might be a fun Easter decor piece. I think maybe just stick some Easter eggs or maybe like a couple of bunnies or something in there. Definitely different. I've never seen it and it was there the last time nobody bought it. So I kind of felt maybe that was meant to be. So I might hold on to this and use it for Easter. It's definitely different. In terms of age, probably 50s or 60s judging by this pink and the colors of the different animals on there. Also for Miss Stone Home, I got these um, strawberry coasters. Now, I know I've seen something like this before at an antique mall, but I'm not exactly sure if these are old or not, but they might be. Because I know that a lot of craft stores, especially with the whole farmhouse trend, they're kind of using vintage images on things, so I could be wrong. These could be newer, or they could be older. But for a whole buck for six of them, I thought that was a really good deal, and I know she can definitely use these on something. So for $1.50, I picked up a elephant figurine. It does have a mark on the bottom for Japan. There are no cracks or chips. It's going to need a little bit of cleaning on it. Like there's some tape right here that I'll take off and I'll probably just Clorox it to sanitize it. When I say Clorox it, I mean take a Clorox wipe to it, not bleach it. Anyway, I've had really good luck selling old figurines like this. I think anything animal appeals to somebody, especially if you're an animal lover like my family and I are. So I think if I can pick these up for $2 or less, I will go ahead and do that. And I think I can get $10, $12 for this little guy here. So if you're interested in any of the items I'm sharing with you in this video that are for sale, the link to my eBay shop is down below in the description. So you can go ahead and check me out there. I've got over 200 items listed right now, hopefully have more. So yeah. Definitely check me out if you see anything in any of my videos that you're interested in that I've mentioned is for sale. This was super cool and I cannot believe it was still sitting there. I don't know if this is Bambi or not, but I found this really cool deer lamp base. I'm probably going to have to cut the felt here because I hear the hardware that you need for the cord. It was rattle around in there. I paid two dollars for this and I think I can go ahead and rewire this and maybe use it somewhere or I might sell it I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do but I thought this was too cool to pass up for two dollars so I went ahead and got that now the first thing that I found when I was at my local Goodwill now let me first tell you that when I have gone to different Goodwills in the past there, the one store that I go to that literally I can get to within 10 minutes of my house is 
they if they have a huge set of dishes they will price the whole set of dishes like it's like x amount of dollars for the whole set the Goodwill that is near a high school in my town, which is literally right across the street from a high school, they mark all their stuff individually. So if you have a set of salt and pepper shakers, it'll be 99 cents a piece. I mean, that's not terrible, $2 for a, a set of salt and pepper shakers, for example. But I mean, come on, if it's a set, you should sell it as a set. But every store is different. I mean, you can't argue it. You might as well just deal with it if you like it. So that's what I say. So anyway... First Goodwill I went to, I found two Pyrex, I think these are restaurant wear. Now the logo is definitely different, I've never seen it this way before. It's either later, like maybe 70s, or maybe if it's even earlier, I don't know. But look at the way that, let me see if I can get it to focus better. See, see how the lettering is on the back? And it says Pyrex Tableware by Corning. So this is either restaurant wear, industrial, not industrial, but like, you know, for the restaurants, things like that. This. Uh, the two of them cost me 99 cents, so I paid 50 cents a bowl. Now, I don't want to have a whole matching set of dishes in my new own house someday. I like a mismatch of stuff. I just think it's fun, and you know, when you're out thrifting, you don't necessarily find everything that you need, or you don't go into it saying, oh, I need a set of dishes today. I'm going to go see if I can find it, and that's all I'm going to have on my mind is dishes. So you got to kind of be open-minded about that, and I have a ton of mismatched dishes. I have sets, don't get me wrong. I've got... Um, some Northern Star dishes. I would love to find the Franciscan Starburst dishes, but you know, I'm sure I'll find them at some point, but you get the point. So this whole bag here cost me $1. What I wanted out of it, I'll just go ahead and open it for you. I saw this in there and I really liked it. I'm not really a big fan of Hollywood Regency, but something about this cherub really spoke to me. And for the less than, I don't even know how many pieces are in there. One, two, three, four, five. I think there's eight pieces in there. For a dollar, that is, I think, less than 20 cents. So, this could be modern. I don't know. But I liked it. If it's older, it's probably from the 70s. 60s or 70s. I'm going to throw this into my jar of old stuff. I just thought it was super, super cool. Now, this is going to go to Miss Stone Home. These two pieces, this old pink dish. It almost looks like it's from a child's tea set. It's got issues, but I'm sure she can use this in crafting or something. And then this um, angel cookie cutter. I'm sure she can use that in crafting as well. Now I did look this up here, this pewter pig. And it's made by, let's see if it'll come up, Reed and Barton Pewter. Or maybe that's just the name of the company who did Pewter. And then, then there's A-A-R-F-A-C. I looked this up, and I think it's an ornament, and it doesn't go for a whole lot of money. So that might just go to Miss Stone Home for crafting of some sort. Now these I'm not exactly sure are old, but since they're already in the video, I might as well go ahead and share them with you. These are... I almost want to say tambourines, but they're not tambourines. They're little um, symbols. And I think these are used in belly dancing classes. And I have two sets of them. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to lot them together. And I might be able to get $15 for them. Because I know there's always someone out there who is taking classes. And I know these probably are not exactly cheap if you buy them new. So... I think I can get the $15 for the set, or for the two of them. 15 to 20 is what I'm thinking. So this is for Jenny, aka 80s Toy Hunter. Brand new in the box, Cabbage Patch Kids, posable figure. Uh, her name is Emmeline Pom, uh, Pom, Emmeline Pam. Now this was originally $2, I guess blue was half off that day, so I got it for a dollar. I see these all the time outside of the packaging, and I don't think they even go for that much, but I know Jenny loves her 80s toys, so this is definitely something that she will love. Now this, I'm starting to question whether or not I should have bought it because, I mean, look at how bad this packaging is. Now, I guess years ago, it says, typically sold for $5.99, the item is being sold as is, the discounted price was $3.00. Maybe this was from 92, because it says 9992. 
But this um, toy itself is from the mid 80s. It's a Lady Lovely Locks Pixie Tails doll. Now she was pretty dirty when I found her, but I cleaned her up with a Clorox wipe, just got rid of all the dirt and grime all over her that I could see. And I looked it up just to see, because a lot of toys like this by Mattel from the 80s just don't go for a whole lot, but for whatever reason this doll does. A lot of them have sold up in the price range of $35 to up to $50. Because mine has condition issues in terms of the box, I'll probably only be able to get about 30 maybe even 25 I paid a buck 50 so whatever I make is going to be pure profit anyway. So here's the back. And it does have the accessories. The accessories are brand new. I don't know if they're going to show in here. It's a lady, lovely locks, and the pixie tails. It's a ballerina lady. Uh, let's see if I can find the date. 1988. So we will see what happens on that. But I didn't think a buck fifty was too much to ask. Another Miss Stone home piece, I think, is this Fun With Food cookbook. And a cookbook designed especially for the busy Maryland housewife. Not a lot of fun images in here, but I think the outside is great. That's Mrs. Virginia Roeder. Definitely the mid-60s, especially with that hair. Maybe even like late 60s. There's no date in here, so I can't really say what year it's from, but it's definitely a 60s vibe. I think she'll really like the outside of this. I can't remember what she charged me for this. It could have been 50 cents, it could have been a buck. Either way, still a great price. Also from Miss Stone Home, at that same thrift store I bought that wheelbarrow, I found this box of children's stationery birthday cards. There's one for Easter. We've also got this one. I mean, there's a ton of good ones in here. I think there's duplicates in here, so I might keep that Easter one. I think that's kind of cool. But I paid, I think it was $1.50 for the whole box. Yeah, definitely a buck fifty. so I might keep a couple of these for Easter and then I'll give her the rest with the box. So that's everything except for two other items that I'm going to share, so I'll be right back. Okay, same thrift store that I bought the wheelbarrow from and those birthday cards, I bought these Coca-Cola trays. Now if you've been watching me for a while, I've given you guys a lot of tips on how to spot originals from reproductions. And what are these? Reproductions. Now, I normally have really given a lot of crap about these reproduction trays because a lot of people buy them assuming they're original and they pay a lot for them or they just don't know. But the reason I bought these is because I think I can use these as learning material for anybody who is interested in Coca-Cola trays or just collecting themselves. Now, like I said, I normally give a, you know, I really spill out a lot of hate for these trays because... A, they're not worth a lot of money, and B, anytime I do see them in antique shops, people want 10, 12 bucks for them and their reproductions. Now, the thrift store I bought these at, let's see if I can get that to focus, were $1.50 each, and I think for learning materials, that's a great price. This one was also $1.50. Uh, these ones are reproductions of the 1914 Betty Girl, or that's what she was known as. And then this one is the brim haired or brimmed hat girl. And the way that you can tell that this is a reproduction, don't you go sliding on me, is in the Coke class, any of the originals will have a five cent, like you can barely make out what it says on the glass. And down here, let me see if I can zoom in on it for you. See where it says reg, focus. Let me set this down so maybe it'll focus better. So right here, it says Reg US Pat Off underneath Coca-Cola. Any of the original trays will have trademark registered in the tail of the sea in Coca. And you can just tell by the 
demeanor of these trays. They're very fuzzy, they're not as bright and vibrant as the originals are. Now, the Betty Girl tray was made in the ovular shape, as well as the square shape, and the square shaped one is the one that I have. But like I said, any of the original trays, trademark will be in the tail of the sea in coca, and the image will be much brighter and colorful and not as dimmed and fuzzy as this one is. Now, if you're new to my channel and you don't really know much about Coca-Cola trays, these items here were given away during the 1970s, you know, around the time of the Bicentennial era. And they, I guess, were given away in grocery stores, like you bought a bottle of Coke and they gave you the tray. I've seen videos of it from different Coke channels here on YouTube. Now, I know that in the 1950s, a company by the name of Metalcraft made trays also. So that was kind of the start of reproducing, at the time, 40-year-old trays. So the Betty Girl tray was included in that. Also ones from the 1930s were also reproduced. The Girl Running on the Beach was reproduced at that time. And also the 1934 Johnny Weissmuller Maureen O'Sullivan trays uh, were reproduced. And that, um, those two people that I just mentioned were Tarzan and Jane, I think, in the 1930s. Now, I know those trays were reproduced in the 50s, and I guess in the 70s and 80s they did it again. And then also the girl with the wind in her hair was also reproduced in the 80s. There are so many different reproductions out there that I think those who don't really know what they're looking for may buy. And if you buy them for like what I paid, that's not bad at all, especially if you're still learning what to look for. But if you're paying $20, $30, $40, $50, $60 dollars for reproductions, you really have to be careful because you could really get swindled and be stuck with something that is not even worth the metal they're made of. So yeah, that's my little uh, ramble about these trays here. So let me go ahead and get into all of the stuff, the vintage stuff that I picked up at the Goodwill outlet. Okay, so before I get started today, here is my receipt for the Goodwill outlet. Did all the math, counted out everything that I purchased, it came to 42 cents each. If I say 42 cents each a lot in this video, I'm sorry, I just want to kind of get that into your head. So the very first item that I spotted, actually, for this haul video, is a 1983 Living Spanish, it's a language course, with two cassette tapes. Now, it does have everything it needs to be complete, and this is going to go on to Amazon if I can't find it on eBay, because I looked it up to see. And overall, it's in very good shape. The only problem is that the books themselves have been used, and they have creases on the spine and on the front cover right here. So on that one, and then on this one here, there are creases. So I listed this on Amazon as used like, or no, used very good because of the book damage. I scrolled through the books real quickly and I didn't see any writing or anything, so that was a good sign. And nobody was selling this fulfilled, so that was another good sign to me. Uh, I didn't do my research on eBay, like I said, so if I can sell this, and I think I can get away with sending it media mail because there are books and there are uh, cassette tapes, so I'll see what happens. If it's worth more or worth my time to sell on eBay than it is to send it into Amazon and have it sit. I'll see what happens there. Turn that down there. So, as I was rummaging through the bins that had items in it that were discarded from the day before, I noticed this Lennox box. Now, I know you're probably thinking this is not old at all because Hence, there's a barcode on it. However, I wasn't buying this box because of the fact that there was a plate in there. Now, had this been brand new, I would have scanned it in for Amazon anyway. But the main reason that I bought this box, again, 42 cents, it's filled with 32 of these teardrop crystals. Now, you all know I've mentioned this in several of my videos. Anytime you come across crystals, whether they're modern or they're older, they always sell because people are always restoring older light fixtures or they find a light fixture that doesn't have the completed look. So they'll go ahead and they'll 
either hunt them down wherever they are looking or they'll go online and see if they can find them. So like I said, 42 cents for these 32 crystals. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna throw all of these up on eBay for $29.99, no offers. I think that's a great deal considering I only paid 42 cents for the box. Okay, so let me go ahead, pause this, and I'll go ahead and grab the next box of items to share. Okay, so I have a little bin of stuff that I picked up. Some things in here are not vintage, so I'm not going to share them. There's one thing in here that is very, very cool and not vintage, but it matches kind of like what I have going on in my room. So I'll share that with you. And like I said, everything that you see is going to cost, or did cost me 42 cents. So I found this Hong Kong Santa. Adjust my phone here real quick. So I found this Hong Kong Santa. I'm going to go ahead and give him to Miss Stone Home because I prefer the Santas that are made in Japan. And I think she can craft with this and we'll get some great use out of him. Also for Miss Stone Home, I found these awesome Santa Claus party picks made in Hong Kong. In the packaging. I think she's going to have a great deal of fun with these crafting. I love finding stuff like this because I know that she will appreciate them. I have a whole... I'll, I mean, maybe I'll talk about this after I'm done with the haul, but I have a lot to do. I leave for the beach this upcoming Saturday, so there's a lot I have to do before I leave. But I'll go ahead and discuss that at the end of this video. So I got three of those. I think she's really going to like this. It's a box. It's marked Japan. And it's got a bunch of small gold ornaments on it. Now, I don't think these have a mark on them. We can go ahead and look, though. I think it just says USA on it. Very faintly, it says USA. But again, 42 cents, and they're all in really good condition. Absolutely. Now, what I think Goodwill does, at least what mine does, or what my Goodwills do in town, especially the donation centers, I think what they do, for the most part, is if they have small items like this that they know they probably can't even get a dollar for, they'll send them to the outlets. And then, you know, items that they think they can get 99 cents for, but they don't sell in the traditional stores, they will come to the bins anyway. So for Jen and her sister Kim, I found two more zippers. Again, 42 cents a piece. One pink, and I guess this one is like a brownish cream color. From the 80s, I think. 70s and 80s. This one didn't have a year on it. One of them did at one point. So yeah, I got those. I gotta get those into the other stash that I have downstairs that I need to send to them. Now this, I really wish the box hadn't gotten ruined. I bought a, a tube of Flarp slime, which if you don't know what that is, it's basically slime that you can... Dig your fingers into and it'll make fart noises. Yeah, I'm 24 and I'm that immature. But I found this Woolworth's Tiny Tiny Christmas Ornaments box with the ornaments in them and it got ruined by the slime. I think it's okay now, but it was the slime leaked and it just got all over everything. See, so yeah, as you can see, water damage from that. But I think Miss Stoneholm will like that. Oh yes. I got these really awesome lemonade tumblers, probably from the 70s. Uh, they're made by Libby, because I see that cursive L there. I just thought those were really cool, and they're very heavy too, which is nice. I think that's it for this bin here. Oh no, there's one more thing. I'm not sure if this is old either, but I'm going to go ahead and sell it myself anyway. Now this isn't old. Again, I'm going to say it again, and I'm sorry, 42 cents I paid for this. It's an awesome frame in the shape of a boat with a bunch of different nautical things on it. Originally, this was a Florida souvenir, and Florida was right down here, but it just came up easily. So I peeled it off, and I'm going to use this in my bedroom. I think this is an awesome, awesome piece. It doesn't say where it was made, and there's a little bit of damage on the rope right here, but that doesn't bother me at all, because it kind of looks like it was meant to be like that. I love this thing. So I did find a piece of jewelry. This might appeal to someone in the south. 
This is a cowboy or cowgirl hat, and it's got a chain right here that dangles. It's a pin or a brooch, not exactly sure. And I can't make out the maker on it. And I don't know if it's going to focus. It does say something on the bottom. I just can't make out what it says. I think as it sits right now before doing research and seeing what that name is, I think this pin will sell for $10 to $12. Okay, so that's everything for this portion. So let me go ahead and grab all the other vintage stuff that I found. I'll be right back. Alright, so this is a bunch of the larger stuff that I picked up at the Google Outlet. Again, I'm sure you're probably tired of hearing me say this, but I paid 42 cents. This is an awesome piece of storage, I would probably say from the 1950s or 1960s. It's for teacups and saucers. I assume you probably put the plates up here and you hang the mugs here. I was shocked that this was still there because you would think somebody who had a vintage, like, kitchen-themed antique booth would grab this, right? Probably made by Rubbermaid or something like that. No markings or anything like that. It was a little dirty and grimy when I found it, so I had to clean it. And there's a little bit of rust on the hook part right here. But that's okay because, you know what, it's going to be used. It's already cleaned. So, I thought that was a really good find. Alright, this next item is, I would assume, probably an older vanity tray. It's got a, like, shabby chic decal on it. Got some issues, as you can see. Wicker's coming apart, but... Overall, this thing is very cool. It is dirty, so it's going to have to be cleaned. I think I'm going to give this to Miss Stone Home. She can craft with it or she can use it. I'm not sure, but I hope she likes it. Okay, so this next item, or items I should say, is something that I decided to go ahead and take a chance with. I remember seeing Michelle thrifting 101 haul something like this for, I don't remember if it was Christmas in July last year or if it was something that she bought around Christmas time in one of her uh, thrift stores. So I found these Nutcracker glasses made by Libby. I believe these are from the 1980s. Most Libby glass, even nowadays, is made here in the United States, which is great. It does have a barcode on the bottom of it, so that definitely hints that it's much much newer but i would definitely assume these are probably from the 1980s i didn't do any research but i know from watching her videos that she sold something like this before they're in great shape i mean 42 cents i i wasn't gonna leave that behind i'm thinking i might be able to get about 20 dollars. that's just a guesstimate i didn't do my research yet so i'm gonna have to go ahead and look them up originally the store wanted faintly right there, $4, which is not a bad price, but I guess, you know, Christmas is not in season right now, so that's probably why they ended up going to the outlet store. Running with Christmas, I found this awesome tree topper, red star, white. It is a little dirty. I've been using some acetone or some nail polish remover to get this sticky residue off. Now, if you take off this piece here, as you can see, I think I just broke it. It was broken and melted, as you can see, probably from the heat of the light bulb over the years. But as long as it stays stale on the stand, I think I'm going to be okay. And I like that. And it works. I plugged it in and it lights up. So that was a really good pickup. Now these, I thought my mom had, and they're not exactly the same ones that she has here. I think these are made by Tupperware. And they're in really good shape. Not even... They don't have any wear or anything to them. I'm not exactly sure how old they are. Because they have a recycling stamp on the back. Um, I might either... I might just send those to Miss Stone Home. She could probably use those when she's crafting certain things. So that'll go to her. Now I thought this was really cool. And when I go to the bins... Not that my outlet store is busy. And a lot of people there go for clothing, and, you know, there's a couple of people there who scan books and media. But there aren't a lot of people who really dig through all of the houseware stuff, so usually I have the houseware stuff to myself. Or There are a few other people, and, you know, we help each other out finding stuff, or like, oh, I'm looking for this, or, you know, if you see something like this when you're out looking, let me know, that kind of a thing. Sometimes I'll do that for others when I'm there. 
But like I said, when you're at the outlet bins, if you see something you think you're interested in or you want to look up and see if it's worth anything, grab it, put it in your cart, and then when you're done looking through everything and you go around a couple more times to see if there's anything you missed, just throw it in your cart. If it's not worth your time, you can always put it back. And I debated on this piece. Now this is for a foldable or collapsible uh, camera. It has Japan on it. Again, 42 cents. It's in very clean condition. I mean, like, look at that. A little bit of wear and tear over here, but you know, when you have something old like this, what do you expect? I was thinking I could use this for when I go flea marketing, like I could throw my phone and my wallet in there and my money. The only thing I don't like about it is the fact that the strap is not really that long. So I'm not sure if I'm going to use it for that or I'm just going to hold on to it and use it for something else. Paid two bucks for that. I thought that was a really good... Oh no, sorry. Two dollars is what they originally wanted, which was a great price in itself. But then when you go to the outlet and I got it for 42 cents, I said, you know, what the heck. If I were to go ahead and sell this because I don't want to use it, or if I don't want to use it, I'll probably throw it up for 10 bucks. 10, 12 dollars. Now these I remember seeing at a Goodwill that's literally probably 15 minutes away going into Pennsylvania. These were sitting in their little craft bins for the longest time. It's a bunch of these fancy butterflies. And I think they're either real or they're faux. I'm not exactly sure. I don't think it says on here. Or maybe they're real, I don't know. But they wanted three for 99 cents, which is a great price in itself. But if you bought a bunch of them, it would have added up to a lot. And I looked these up and they don't sell for a whole lot of money. But I think Miss Stone Home will have fun with these. Now, I didn't buy all of them. I just bought her, I think, probably 20 of them. There was a whole lot more, like maybe 60 or 80 of them. And it was 42 cents for the whole stack of these. I would say these are probably from the 70s, because it does say Taiwan on the bottom. So I will go ahead and give those to her, and I think she can do some great things for spring with these. Found a... Another Pyrex, um, what was this stuff? Tableware? Pyrex Tableware uh, saucer. So I thought that was cool. Now this last piece, before I get to the clip of me in my car and I show you the actual item, I was kind of unsure about this one because, you know, a lot of these kinds of things aren't really, I don't know, just depends on the person, I guess. So I went ahead and found this piece. It's a new old stock, old car, quote unquote, photo frame from the 60s or 70s. Never been used, it's still in the original packaging. It's made of a heavy plastic. I thought it would be worth more than just the 42 cents that I paid for it. I think I might go ahead and list this for $20 and I will see what happens. So let's go ahead and jump into the last item, the one item I wanted to share with you all. Hey guys, so I don't normally film videos in my car because I don't want to be deemed a weirdo, but excuse my language, but holy freaking shit. I cannot believe I walked past this two or three times in the thrift without seeing it. Holy fucking shit. This, if you don't know what it is, is a 1958 Holt Howard Pixie Wear jelly jar. I have never, ever seen one of these out in the wild before. It's got crazing all over it, but I don't care. I am going to be displaying this for a long freaking time. And guess how much I paid for this awesome treasure? 75 cents. I'm literally shaking. This is unbelievable. I have never ever seen any of these outside of antique stores. And when they're in antique stores, they are a thousand dollars. Well, not really. Slight exaggeration, but they're not cheap. So when I saw this one and there's not a cracker chip on it, whoa. So yeah, could you tell I was excited about finding this piece? 
like I said, I do apologize for the uh, bad words that I used, but when you find something that you've never seen before out in the wild, sometimes you get a little too excited and you spit out words that you wouldn't normally in your videos. So this is the close-up of this. If you follow me on Instagram, you would have already seen this. It's an awesome piece. And somebody had asked if the spoon itself was intact. And it is. So this is displayed on my awesome shelf that I keep in my room that I display all my cool tchotchkes in. Now, sometimes I do rotate things out because I'm not trying to make this room a junk heap like I had with my grandmother's house or when we were living there. I mean, anything vintage that I found I would make space for. This is nice because I can just display whatever I want to. It doesn't make the room look junky. And it just helps keep my display pieces under control. So if you remember this guy here, I bought him at the outlet a while ago, and somebody mentioned that I think he hangs off of a pot or he hung on a goldfish bowl back in the day. So I went ahead and just hung him here. I thought that looked kind of cool and kitschy. So yeah, that's my fun little shelf there. I know I featured this on Instagram, but I've never really shown it to you all in a video before. So yeah, let's go ahead and we'll conclude this video. So yeah, I was pretty uh, tickled to find that Holt Howard jam and jelly jar. Like I said, I've never ever seen those outside of antique stores, and I did walk past it two or three times until I saw it. So that just goes to show you, you need to go around those stores a few times to get all the stuff that you want. So that concludes this video for today. But before I go, I want to let you all know that I am not going to be putting out any haul videos for the next two weeks because I am going to be going up to the beach. It's that time of year. I've been going up to Maine since I was 17, and I'm continuing the tradition for as long as it goes. So instead of doing a haul video for you, I was thinking about maybe doing a York Beach, Maine vlog for you guys. Do you guys want to see that? Let me know in the comments if you would. It probably be, bleh, it probably won't be everything in one day. I'm probably going to break it up into clips because I don't do everything in one day. But I'll kind of show you what my routine is for when I'm up there and, you know, some of the sites. I'll give you guys a tour of the town that I live in and just some of the cool places you can go if you decide to visit this awesome little beach town. So that's it for you today. Please be sure to give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment below, subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell next to the subscribe button if you'd like to know when new videos are posted. The links to my social media accounts via Instagram are also in the description box. Instagram is where I'm most currently active, where you can see pictures of items to come in future haul videos, along with what I'm doing in real time. So that's all today, folks. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you all very soon.